Jamaica's corruption perception ranking improves and in sport regional Super 50 defending champions Barbados pride into the final of the tournament. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Thursday, February 22nd. I'll be back with the details in just a moment. You're in an elevator and the power goes out. You expect to plummet all the way to the bottom. You know, if your son has a fight with his girlfriend and somebody runs a red light, do you expect the airbags to work? You know, kind of the backup safety system. Uh, you know, if there's a parachute and a plane, the engine dies, and the man jumps out. Yeah, I used to come to work my granddad's car. Um, it took quite a while to get here, too. We had to start out early and make sure, because we had to be here. Those tours left at 9 o'clock. So if you were to be late and make your tour late, that made the whole day late as a result of that, so we really tried to be on time and make sure you were here um, to settle in and to be ready to start for, for 9 o'clock. Jamaica's ranking on the 2017 Corruption Perception Index, CPI, has improved. The country has moved up 15 places over last year on the latest CPI, which was released yesterday by Transparency International. But Executive Director of National Integrity Action, Professor Trevor Munro, says the gains could easily be eroded if delays in the full appointment of a Chief Justice are prolonged. He said Jamaica's score is now on par with the Americas and marginally above the global average. Jamaica's performance in 2017 reflected an improvement in score on the Corruption Perception Index from 38 to 44 on a scale of 0 to 100 and a jump upwards by some 15 places from number 83 of 176 countries in 2016 to number 68 of 180 countries in 2017. From significantly below the average scores in both the Americas and globally in 2016, Jamaica's 2017 score is now on par with the Americas and marginally above the global average. At 25, Barbados is perceived as the least corrupt among English-speaking countries in the Caribbean. In Trinidad and Tobago now, state-owned oil company Petrotrid is considering splitting into two separate entities in order to survive. Chairman of Petrotrid, Wilfred Espiné, told a joint select committee of parliament yesterday that it is the only option to save the company. We are going into the change of, of, of regulations that are impacting on us having to spend on the ultra-low sulfur that if we don't spend on it, we are closing down Petrotrin. The startling declaration made by Petrotrin Chairman Wilfred Espinay as he and other top executives of the state-owned oil company appeared before the Parliament's Joint Select Committee on Energy on Wednesday. Mr. Espinay was making reference to the plant under construction at Petrotrin meant to produce ultra-low sulfur diesel that he said will be required to replace the existing diesel product according to international regulations by the year 2020. So therefore, we have to get our, our employees on board with the necessary changes to get to this in order to be able to have a narrative to get our lenders on board. So we have to, before we could even get the investment into ultra-low sulfur, we are going to have to get buy-in from the employees and their representatives into using this competitive roadmap a roadmap that includes a change in the very structure of Petrotrin as it exists now, as those watching the Parliament Channel's live broadcast of the GSE hearing saw a PowerPoint presentation appear on their television screens. Structurally, we are in, we're presently engaged in formally separating the company into two separate and distinct business units, um, one for the upstream and one for the downstream. The upstream side of Petrotrin's business involves the exploration of oil, while the downstream side involves its refining operation. 
That report from Jural Brown of TV6 News. Over in St. Kitts, now members of the main opposition, St. Kitts, Nevis Labour Party and supporters held a protest during yesterday's sitting of Parliament to take a stand against what they describe as the dictatorial actions of the controversial Speaker, Michael Perkins, over the past three years. Members of the opposition have accused the Speaker of stifling democracy. They also pointed to what they say is the high-handedness and abuse of the National Assembly by Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris, noting out that he convened a session of Parliament with no public business down for debate on the order paper. The demonstrators also highlighted incidents in which opposition parliamentarians were prevented from speaking and were outspoken about a decision by the Speaker to unilaterally suspend the legislator from Nevis, Connors Maynard, for 10 days. Stay with us. Your Midday Sport is next. Barbados Pride captain Craig Brafford finally struck form with a patient 100 as the regional Super 50 title holders made light work of Kent Spitfires late last night to surge into the final of the tournament. Opting for first knock in the opening day-night semi-final at Coolidge Cricket Ground, Pride emerged from a slow start to rally to 263 for three of their 50 overs. They were anchored by Bradford's unbeaten 105 from 136 deliveries, but propelled by an aggressive 81 of 73 balls from the fluent Ruston Chase. Left-handed opener Omar Phillips weighed in with a breezy 62, which was his maiden regional one-day half-century. In reply, Kent were forced to navigate a series of rain interruptions, leaving them with a revised target of 230 of 43 overs. But that proved a mountain to climb, and they ended on 216 for 8, and with a 13-run defeat under the Duckworth Lewis method. Now, Sean Dixon top scored with 51, his second successive half century, while Adam Roos struck 45, and Callum Haggett 31. Leg spinner Hayden Walsh Jr. with figures of 2 for 45 and left arm seamer Dominic Drakes on 2 for 49 made key strokes while Braffitt produced a stingy 10 over spell which cost just 37 runs and kept the English county in check. And Guyana Jaguars will look to hold off a resurgent Windward Islands Volcanoes as they chase a spot in the final of the Regional Super 50 later today. The two teams will meet in the second day-night semi-final at Coolidge Cricket Ground with the winners going on to face defending champions Barbados Pride. Jaguars will be the favoured side after topping Group B played in Antigua with 26 points while posting six wins and two defeats from their eight outings. And they won their first three matches in the preliminaries before losing twice. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.